think these videos are useful for people who want to see how to methodically approach an assignment and assessment. And I hope these videos bring you some clarity as to what's expected. Uh... Hello, existing prospective or perhaps non-existent architecture students interested in the Masters of Architecture course at UTS, University of Technology, Sydney. In this video, I'm going over my final assessment for my, what's the course called? Unique forms of continuity in space. We had to do some additional work which was not relevant or needed to be shown in the final assessment. Um, unfortunately, some of it is box ticking, but at the same time, you can make the most of this and put together a really strong conceptual argument or understanding of why you're doing the architecture you are doing. I won't read through this, but really students had to come up with a sustainability statement, a conceptual statement, and a return brief. Okay, that's not true. Really, you only have to do the first bit, the sustainability statement, but I like to add these extra two because they add a lot more understanding. And when you present, really, if you've written these points, well, you can just repeat them. And boom, there's your 10-minute presentation in a nutshell. This is some site analysis and understanding the local surrounding the context is really important. Quite funny uh, aside, a lot of people seem to think that this is situated in Milton, which is a nearby significant town. It's actually in Woodstock. It's literally on Wo Woodstock Road. So um, yeah, knowing the difference and presenting to site after doing this sort of analysis really makes a difference. Even if it's conceptual and you're not getting paid to do this, it's a good habit to get into and understand. Here's a site plan. This is looking at the entire site and it markates the boundary. All oh, right, the files are gonna probably be slow to load while I record. From our site visit, I assessed the existing anchor point of the site, which is determined by the Heritage House. And then I put it on an axial pivot, or I rotated it 112 degrees, which was not random. It was based on some site analysis in the first assignment. We actually had to do some artistic things. Uh, in this case, a triptych, where it's a panel of three, and each panel needs to assess something different on the site, which would not be revealed through standard architectural measurement or understanding the direction of the topography, and also the existing views that the Heritage House had set up. And I said, well, it's blocking this entire view here, so whatever goes behind will actually be hidden from the existing house in a way. What was there originally is, uh, d in my opinion, dilapidated sheds. So we're going to knock those down, we're going to add new storage, and we're going to put the micro campus back there. And then there's the Heritage House, and then there is the lower functions and things to do. And then there's the entirety of the site. And as part of the brief, we had to implement something to do with ritual, which won't make so much sense now, but my idea is uh, in food preparation and you go down this about a kilometer walk of gravel. And then at the very end, there's smoking pits. It's not a place where you smoke cigarettes. It's a place where you smoke food uh, in great smoking pits, which in my opinion would be a phenomenal Netflix adaptation of some kind of food preparation. And you make it there, you take it back to the top, you prepare it, you eat it in separate rooms. Everything is hybridized monasticism. Then these are some site models. I, oh, this is the first site model I put together by hand in a very long time. And I hated every moment of it, but the site itself, the model, was very cute and effective at depicting this three tier hierarchy, which I have proposed. Then, um, as part of another box tick, unfortunately, you need to show your progressions uh, in architectural development. At each week, I would sketch over the new drawings. I would change it up. And yes, I used an iPad to draw most of these. And then in the last month, I started to cap things, really. These are uh, the plan and section aligned. And then they have call outs to, uh, to details, which details actually are very important. Because if you don't do that, you can't prove you understand how your construction or your architecture is put together. Anyway, um, these are the panels. Well, this is one of the panels that I presented on my final, which was very well received because it really told the story without having to make it look complicated or confusing. I personally like clarity because I can talk to it. I can point to things and everyone knows exactly what I'm talking about for that reason. 
So we have at the top of the hierarchy, the Mycocampus, then we have the Heritage Contemplation, and then we have the Theatron. Now here's a fun tidbit for everybody. Theatron is basically a non-spherical or circular amphitheater. And that's the only real difference I can distinguish from the two. Another point to reinforce the hierarchy thing is uh, the size of pebbles. So my idea for this site is this slit in the landscape, which is my boundary that I've predefined based on my um, prior analysis, is uh, it's doing many things for the site. But firstly, it can collect water as a simple drainage system. And then that water, which is collected, I hope this loads. It'll look much nicer when it's crisp. Thank you, computer. So that water collected um, can be pumped back up and used for the evaporative cooling effect when it's hot and sunny. This water can be pumped to fight water. <laughs> this water can be pumped to fight fire when the event occurs. Because, bear in mind, we are in a fire zone. And I've depicted that through this red and yellow, which are not arbitrary. I actually got this data from a website, McCone Mosaic. I highly recommend you use them for checking out zoning. And it's a free service, well, a limited free service, but holy moly, it tells you everything you need to know for, for architecture projects, um, or at least uh, university ones. I mean, it already goes further than most students are willing to go. Uh, anyway, these pebbles are going up in different sizes, and that reinforces the hierarchy which has been established here. So at the bottom, it's about activity. In the middle, it's about the heritage. Um, and that goes with the accommodation as well, which is aligned to the existing heritage plane. And then we have the microcampus at the back, which is hidden from everything, um, which is a very self-contained, tight use of space. And a main reason why I defined this slit on the landscape, I had a preliminary interview with the existing clients I say that, that quite facetiously. We really had a site meeting and I spoke with the clients, but I, you, you use this language when you present um, just to sound like you're architecting. Uh, and they said this big pasture is one of the main reasons they bought the place, uh, as well as loving the heritage architecture. Um, it's the view. So if you were to build majority of your construction on this adjacent hill, it would actually be going against the main reason the clients love the place anyway so you have to minimize you have to minimize that uh if, well th that was my approach and then we, we have this subterranean i'm actually jumping back and forth sorry about that then we have this subterranean oh, i'm not really then we have a subterranean music chamber with the aqueduct which is capturing all this water from the top of the hill so of course it's going to be at the bottom you don't want to have to pump water you've captured uphill that is counterproductive um and the reason it's subterranean is because it's in a fire zone as shown here so that all makes perfect sense directly underneath that panel of the plan and section and diagrams explaining how the site functions I had this, a series of perspectives and the proposed flora and materials. In effect, it's starting from the bottom of the site and working its, oh, okay, thanks. In effect, it's working from the bottom of the site and working its way up to the top. Now, some feedback I received was, this is the hero image. It should fill up at least half of this entire panel, but I always like to go crazy with my uh, renders. Of course, you're only expected to do minimum of one, but everybody likes to do at least five to ten. In my case, I must have done, well, a few more. Um, and that's up to me. So really, less is more in many cases, but there were so many examples of architecture that I just had to say I thought about this because it is really important. And really, looking back, what I should have done at the start of the semester was make a bubble diagram or a Venn diagram, examining every possible way to use these architectures. Is that English? Yeah, supposedly. Um, and that is this bound, well, this edge boundary that I have defined that slid in the landscape through the new RLs that provides an opportunity for a place to sit. And then um, in my case, they, they are quite singular. Uh, and then the feedback was, you push that further, you could have a lounge 
or a lounge that goes across the entire length. Uh, little things like that really make a big difference. Just to say you've thought of every single thing possible. Uh, the idea here, yeah, for, we'll look at it from this perspective, is that when you're at the top of the micro campus, you still have a reference to the heritage architecture that's in the center of this southern landscape. The rest are yeah, depicting moments that I really appreciate. We had to have a gallery. Of course, I had to do my reinterpretation of Marcel Duchamp's urinal. Um, nobody asked about that, by the way. But of course, that what I'm trying to say is you can have fun with these things and people will not bat an eye. Um, but maybe that's just me geeking out in the architecture. But this shot here really does depict the three RLs which are set up in the site. Um, and this one, funnily enough, didn't take that much time to put together. Really, it's just going into the program, cutting out the landscape, and then putting it on top of an existing photo. Okay, I walked the other side of the hill, I took a photo, I put this in, and that's it. You just put in the little trees. And it, it makes a hyper-realistic image without having to do much effort, and then just rip it out of the model you've already made. By the way, I made this model in a program called Blender. It's entirely free. It's a pain to learn, but once you know it, it is amazing, but definitely takes a lot more time than um, using Rhino, I think is the popular thing. And um, looked at trees, looked at materials. Um, these fed off the existing materials. I think something I should have done with this empty space is put in the existing material palette because I did do that in a previous assignment. Um, so yeah, just something I missed out on. But they, they do feed into the existing material palette of the site with a few um, extras like the sandstone gabions, which are just um, cages which you fill rocks in, and that's really working as the site boundary um, because it's free draining and it can hold the soil and the weight and the pebbles. Then burnt timber, obviously soundproofing wasn't there before, but everything else was there. It's just a, a different play of materials. Then supporting this document are the details. Arguably one of the most important supporting documents to your presentation, because without them, you're just showing forms, but you're not showing you understand how the architecture is constructed. And that is a very, crit very critical part of architecture, especially documentation. Um, so this panel was looking at the exterior, then, oh, I see what it's done. Let's put, set them into two pages. Okay, this panel is looking at more of the architecture to the point of the accommodation experience. And over this, um, keep in mind that this is an A2 panel, so it's big enough that you can point to and, and everyone can see the form from a distance of what I'm doing. Uh, but th this was another fun place, so it's going to that hybridized monasticized lifestyle. And then I referred to Corel T's The Minimum Dwelling, um, but that's 100 years old, and what that excludes is the social element that the world is missing these days. So we're going to have two bunk beds, which also is even more subsistence minimum than he could have ever imagined. <laughs> anyway, I'm getting nerdy here, I know, I'm sorry. Um, another point of this is you walk in and the window frames are slightly out of reference to your height, so you get to see what's happening on the horizon or at your feet, but it keeps you self-contained. And the idea here is you aren't encouraged to stay in the accommodation when you're at this micro campus. No, you're gonna spend your time in social settings and groups and activities outside of the house. But here's a place to store your stuff. Here's a place to study or keep things on. And you go up a ladder, you sit in your bed, you look outside and you have reference to an entire landscape and sliding windows for ventilation. So it's just an exciting play of residential, I suppose. And then we looked at different possibilities of windows and um, it, it really became a notion of containing the beholder from within, but pr still providing an opportunity to understand what's happening on the outside. But it, it really is self-contained in the micro campus. And then by the time we get to the music chambers, it becomes a question of how do we stop this soil here from falling down to this giant pit? I think it's seven meters high, or eight meters high. Uh, and that was, uh, uh, I, I couldn't have come to these conclusions without the help of the structure engineer, which was coming in. I think his name was Tom, but I don't remember his last name. I'm sorry, Tom.
but he was fantastic. Really, really great addition. Uh, and then the rest of it kind of stems from Angular discipline based on the Angular approach. Um, but these presentations, you only get 10 minutes maximum. You're lucky if you get 15. You don't have time to explain all of this, but the idea is if you document it well enough, people can look at it, well, professionals will look at it, and they'll understand what you're saying. You don't have to explain it, is what I'm trying to say. Um, and then this is the smoking pit, which I designed, uh, and it's just a place where you can make your meats, you can smoke, you can barbecue, uh, vegetables, of course, it's inclusive of all foods, it's got a little rotisserie, I'm just having a lot of fun here. You're, you smoked your fruits and vegetables and your meats, or whatever you would like, and you take it up here, and you can go straight to the eating area, which is an unenclosed covered space with a fireplace with bifold doors. And this becomes a bit of a circular motion in itself. So there's a kitchen or preparation area. So you you clean up, you prepare, you have these trolleys, which you trolley down, and this becomes a circular motion in itself. I think these videos are useful for people who want to see how to methodically approach an assignment, an assessment, and I hope these videos bring you some clarity as to what's expected. I'm getting a distinction average for these assignments on this course. Of course, I'm always aiming for a high distinction, but imagine getting that with Professor Anthony Burke. That would be an absolute wonderful thing. And I'll update the caption if I do get an HD or if I get a D or if I get a credit, which I would be very shocked, but you never know. <laughs> Maybe this isn't well done, but um, according to the feedback, I am well beyond my years for where I should be right now. Touched my heart. Thank you very much to that person. Please let me know if you have any questions, just shoot them in the comments and I will most likely give you a thorough response because I really appreciate those questions. And this is a small channel, so I have um, full capacity to do that. So make use of me while you can. Thanks so much for watching this. I really appreciate um, a like and most more likely a comment letting me know how you feel. And say, oh, your hair looks disastrous today. Um, I don't care if it has anything not to do with the architecture. Okay, anyway, random aside, thanks so much for sitting through this with me. I hope you have a wonderful time, and I hope if you are in architecture, masters at UTS, well, you are able to have as fun of a time as I have in this course. All right, till next time.